welcome back to Couple With. You got a, you know, your boys back at it again. Griff, Wooch, joining you as always. Got a, yeah, we got a breakdown this weekend's car too. I mean, like we just gave a review. If you want to check that out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we just reviewed the last weekend's card. Um, the three title fight main you know, main event UFC 259. Now we've got what is this UFC Fight Night Edwards versus Muhammad. I believe it's at the apex. Bit of a um, B plus card, but it's got B some. Minus good, it's got almost. a couple of. It's got a good reckon, few. Yeah, it's got a couple of goodies in there. Where's the plus coming from? Like I need it. You're gonna have to. The main see. event we finally get to see Leon Edwards fight. Uh, yeah. Prelims headlined by Angela Overkill Hill and My, uh, Ashley Yoda. Nice. Love yeah, we Angie. like that. We like that a lot. Beautiful, and, uh, Angie. I yeah, love you. It's got it's got a couple of good fights on there. Angie Angie Hill might be maybe my favorite female fighter to watch. I love watching her fight. Mm. Um, yeah, all right. well, we can take it from the you know we'll go from the bottom to the top. I'm gonna say from the what is this? Just the prelims. It's not even early prelims. Not a lot happening. It's a very COVID. Uh, I won't say COVID positive card, but like you know what I mean. Like that that you know a run through that last year. We had some cards and then there was a lot of like, you know, very average cards going through just so that the UFC could make their nut at the end mm. of the year. You know what I mean? They just threw fights together. You got what you got. And the prelims to this is kind of exactly what I'm saying. Like this. Well, we did just I'm, come off one of the most stacked cards yeah, ever. So naturally yeah. the next one's not going to be as stacked. It's but like... I do, I do have faith in the cards that, you know, don't seem as... Yeah, exciting yeah. or eventful on paper that they do actually pan out and kind of deliver yeah now that we've said it too i bet you anything it'll just be finish 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 yeah. sub knockout whatever um dude angela hill's getting a wheel kick knockout yeah poor ashley yoda i've never really seen much potential in her but like we'll get to that um yeah it's you know what it is like you know when you have wrestlemania and then you get monday night uh, monday night raw like Sometimes Monday Night Raw lives up to the hype of WrestleMania, but other night, uh, you know, a lot of other times too, you'll have a really kind of like the come down from such a huge card is, well, we get short notice Bilal Muhammad versus Leon who hasn't fought for two years, Edwards. So that's well, what we have. Um, starting off the card, Matthew something. What did you say it was? Jedi. Uh, semi it? the Jedi. Um, okay. Unless it's semi the Jedi, which doesn't okay. make so as I've much never sense. S- I didn't watch him fight, but I've seen Jason Witt fight. So you can tell me a little bit about Matthew Semi the Jedi, and I'll tell you about Jason Witt, and we'll All see right, what we come. first. Witt, I believe he's only fought twice in the UFC from what I've seen. I saw him debut, I think it was against short notice against Takashi Sato and got, um, I believe it's Takashi Sato, right? Um, well to wait, he got KO'd, but short notice, it's hard sometimes, you know? Like you have to just take the opportunity when it's presented and you don't get a lot of... Ch- uh, um, time to prepare for who, you know who it's going to be so you kind of just have to make sure you're ready take the fight he's actually a pretty big welterweight so he looked like he looked like a brick shit house to me he was like that scott holtzman build like he just looks like he's made out of a ton of bricks yeah um and then he bounced back and he got a knockout win in his last fight i don't remember who but i remember seeing it so he's one and one 18 and six though which is actually a pretty decent record though and i think semi the jedi who he's looking at here is seven and two so i think he has about almost two and a half to three times the fight experience mm-hmm. as um as this fella so i mean you're gonna have to sell me on semi otherwise i'm going with jason witt well i've only seen him fight once and it was a while ago but if i remember it was against carlton minor who okay. i don't know he's not a, he's not a huge name we know this but i remember semelsberger putting on a, a pretty decent clinic it, it felt like uh Carlton was getting pressed up against the fence a lot and you know, real physical kind just, of fight. Yeah, like, just, is ran, it like, just ran right through him. Okay. Like was it sort of like a striking clinic or you just kind of shut him down? Just too much pressure, too much output, and just kind of smooshed him into the cage and bit of both. I remember the array of strikes was pretty decent, but yeah, he just uh he just ran him over and he um I'm pretty sure that was his first fight and only fight in the UFC until now. Uh, so yeah, it should be interesting to see how he goes against someone who has a lot of experience. True. Well, yeah, I look forward to it. Um, glancing over some of this card. I mean, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm going to say it's pretty much, yeah, hot, hot garbage. I'm not going to lie. I look at that. You might be able to sleep in this Sunday morning. Yeah. You know, I am going to have probably breakfast. 
you know, a nice cup of tea, stretch my feet a little bit, go and pat my dog. Maybe what are we take talking a- about for breakfast? Uh, for me, if I'm, if I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, I'll go with like a nice smoothie. Like I'll blend up some porridge. I mean, like some, sorry, some oats, mm-hmm. frozen berries, banana, protein powder, a bit of manuka honey. And mix it up with either water or milk, normally water, just because it helps. What I, that's pretty much exactly what I Yeah, have. yeah. And and that helps me, you know, that, that really gives me a fucking fat boost. If I'm whatever, if I if I'm feeling just you know, a bit CBF uh with the breakfast and the effort, I'll just whatever, knock out a bowl of cereal or something. Yeah. I got uh, what did we say? Like, I think I meant to bring it up on the last episode, but it might not have come through. Like the abnormal amount of wheat picks that I eat. Like you said you could do what was it 16 or 18 wheat bix what was yeah it? i would normally do three bowls of six on that's average. pretty fucked i'm not gonna yeah. lie i mean i i've done 13 as my most and i've had a witness there to, to yeah. attest to it i don't know what it is some somehow um it's an anomaly and i don't i can't explain it because i'm not even that big of an eater but like i would average like that was like kind of like my average amount. Like we were going through box of boxes of wheat picks so quick. I just kind of thought that was normal. Mm. And then, you know, like even then, yeah. Like if I wanted two bowls of six, like that would be kind of like if I, you know, if I was in a hurry, three bowls of six is like now I'm fucking full and ready, you know, ready to do with my day what I want, you know, go watch some fights. I feel so, you yeah. real quick. So, my, my ultimate, you know, as if kind of eat food eating challenge moment was uh, when I Well, you can drink. Watching you drink is something. I can behold. drink, but that's, <laughs> yeah. that's for You got a stomach. Time. That's, Boy's that's, got a stomach on it. I and Tomasic, dude. That's another yeah. story. But I had, the first time I had Subway, we were, um, this was when I was young. I must have been about 13. And, I, you know, back in the day, you have to, you have to go wherever your dad goes. They can't, like, you're not ever left home alone or just for me anyways. So uh, I don't know. We're, we're off picking up sheet metal or tires or some bullshit. Yeah, Bunnings run. And he decides no, to shout us lunch. Yep. Us being my sister and I. And uh, we, I thought we were going to get Mac- Macca's or maybe KFC because we never got KFC. But he takes us into this store called Subway and uh, hands me a chicken teriyaki sweet onion with some Ooh. olives and spinach and whatnot in it. And I tried it and I could not believe yeah. what I was eating. Yep, I ate yep. three and a half foot of Subway that day. <laughs> and I puked. I puked all yeah. of it back up. I've had a Subway puke myself. Um, yeah. Damn, three and a half. So what? Three and a half I, foot. I ate, three, three foot longs and a six inch. Dude? I ate my foot long. That's outrageous. I ate half of my sister's, half of my dad's. And then, uh, you know, he bought a spare one for us like to take back home. And I ate mine on the way home. Jesus. All right, all right. Yeah, well, I don't know. As I said, maybe Wheat Picks is just a weird anomaly with me. And I, I have a pretty shitty story too. I should have probably saved it for the Life from the Couch studio. Shout out, Doodle. Um, I ate Wheat Picks once. And I remember it was the last bowl of Wheat Picks I ever had. And I, I took the Wheat Picks out, put the put in the bowl, poured my milk in, and I started eating. And I normally have it with a bit of honey. Like I have honey on everything breakfast. Like literally anything sure. breakfast, I have honey. No sugar, no nothing, just honey. And I bite into it and then I look down, I, nothing tastes out of the ordinary. And I look down at my bowl and there's all these like little green floaties. And I'm like, like little small green floaties. And I'm looking at it. I'm just like, yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. So I look down and I'm like, I don't like it. Like, you know, when you see something that you know is just a little bit off and you kind of, it just stops, it kind of completely halts your whole, you know, your stomach just stops. You're like, there's mm. no, I can't, now I can't eat. Yeah, so yeah. I go over to the box. I grab another dry piece of wheat picks out and I go over into the sink and like crush it up. And I look in the sink and there's all these little green bugs just oh, what in like jumps, dude. Yeah, dude, jumping around in the Fuck sink, off. just all like moving around. I was like, so just ate probably like a full wheat pick and a half out of that bowl. And you know that's what, what was like- you ever seen them or just some sort of upper beak anomaly? An- anomaly? Uh, anom- anom- anomaly. 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 Jesus, um, I'm not sure what it was, but like we're normally pretty uh, tight at home here. Like with you know, put closing containers and like making sure like the bags have all you know got the air squeezed out of them, the little peg on it and whatever. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know what happened, but those wheat bix must have been in there for a hot second because they had a whole colony of these little green bugs, and I've never had wheat bix since, unfortunately. Like, oh even if, dude, yeah. Fuck all that. Anyway, we'll go back to the fights. I mean. 
as I said, I, once I've had that whole breakfast, I will come back and probably watch these prelims, but I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not chomping at the bit to watch fucking Courtney Casey and JJ Aldrich. I'm not going to lie. And I'll tell you why. You got nine and eight. What's her statistic, Griff? I believe, I'm pretty sure I re- read this somewhere. Statistically, Courtney Casey, you know, she's still a fighter. I'm sure, sure she's forgotten more about fighting than I've She'll even learned. She kicked her ass. She kicked my ass. But yeah. nine and eight professionally, she has the lowest takedown defense average in the whole sport. Like no one has more like takedowns landed on them than Courtney Casey. Male or sure. female. So that's not good. And I think JJ Aldrich, she's not a grappler, I don't think, by any means. I think she's pretty just pretty well-rounded, but she, I think most of her finishes have come from uh, striking, like TKO punches, and then she's got a lot of unanimous decisions. So definitely not picking Courtney Casey. And I think she had a rubbery win over Angela Hill, but we'll come back to that as well. Um, other names to probably look at on this prelim card, if you, you know... If you're watching intently, Nasrat Hakparast, always fun. Um, another sort of lightweight contender floating outside of the 15, looking to break in there. I don't think this is the fight to do it, obviously. Like, I think he, his opponent was replaced. It looks like he's fighting like a, someone on short notice. He's fighting an undefeated fighter with seven sub wins out of 12. What's it? Rafa or maybe Rafa Rafa Garcia. Garcia. Sure. So, yeah. So, we'll be interested to see. But Nasrat Hakparast coming out of... Um, is it all-star is it i think it's all is it all-star gym in canada where GSP? tristar, tristar montreal. Me. montreal there you go um i think he's out of that camp so he'd be training with kevin lee mm-hmm. training with gsp like they've got some i mean what's his name sahabi mm-hmm. not ariel hawani um i'm gonna pick nasrat honey yaya and ray rodriguez that's some like you got a long time vet at bantamweight versus i think ray rodriguez he must be coming off contender potentially because he's got mm-hmm. a gray photo normally means they're a contender series uh, yeah. if, if they come off contender it's usually um uh, it's literally like their photos in black and white but this guy yeah black and white yeah, yeah no photo whatsoever so i'm guessing he's i don't know I can oh, check on my end yes ray rodriguez um charles jordan's always fun to watch i like I-, I will actually tune in to watch his fight um i like charles jordan a lot um uh, marcelo roger no picture haven't seen him fought, fight before but i've seen charles jordan is and i've liked pretty much what i've seen so far and we'll get to the headliner of that prelim card, um, Angela Hill, maybe my favorite female fighter. Yeah. Currently, she I love her. I she just, is so likable. She's a she's so likable, but b she she's a real fighter, man. Like mm. last year through COVID, she fought everybody. Great just story ready, too. Just taking, you know what I mean? Yeah, great story. Just t- taking fights left, right, and center. Just signs on the dot. Doesn't matter who it is. I think she's basically the Jorge Masvidal of that division coming mm. by like at least from what I can remember, I feel like she's won the last four decisions that she's lost. I thought that she won and I might she's just, might just because I'm a homer, but I feel like she's had a rough drop. For, the yes. Claudia Gedalia one was, was rough. Shit. Yeah. Let's have a look. What, what are her last few fights? Let me just pull those up. Cause like, uh, what does she got? So 2020. I got you. Michelle Waterson. I thought she won that fight. Gedalia, I thought she won that fight. She did win against Loma Look Boomney. Uh Hannah Cyphers, she beat going back to 2019. Beat Ariana Kalnesolosi. Lost to Yan Nan. I thought she definitely lost that one. Won against Jody Escabel, but that's a six and six fighter. Lost to Randa Marcos. Mm by sub so like you can't really argue with she's that. she's had but a yeah, rough roll of the dice yeah but she's fighting everyone though she's fighting every name and you her know, story said, is great if you watch the joe rogan podcast with her she got into muay thai super late and just kind of became a bit of a prodigy yeah well exactly i, th- I like her skill set she's really polishing up her skill set it's just as you said it might just be you know finishing ability like what jorge masvidal did he was just a decision machine there for a while like he had all the skills mm. you could see everything was there it's just for whatever reason he just couldn't start finishing fighters until he had that career resurgence in 2019 and i think angela hill must be close to that i have a feeling she's going to have a similar run where like she'll probably beat ashley yoda i'm mm. picking her to win i've not mm. seen anything impressive from ashley yoda to be honest um and i think she should fight uh, what's her name? Lamosh from the last card. That oh, yeah. would be that'd be fantastic. That's what I want to see. 
anyway, um, line us up. We got the main card now, and as you put it perfectly, it was just a B plus card. There's a couple of good ones on there. B minus. I'd give a B minus from other than the main event, which I'm intrigued, but I would have obviously been more intrigued had it been Leon versus Armsit, but that's fine. Mm. Start Leon us off. a lot of other people actually, but so we got Eric. Your boy Anders and your boy Darren the, Darren the dentist Stewart. So this fight's going to be pretty cool. The um, dentist always fun to watch. Your boy always fun to watch. Can't your wait. Boy, for this your one. boy's thick too. Your yeah, boy's your boy, thick. Your boy's thick, man. He's fought at light heavyweight, twenty pounds heavier, and d- didn't look small. Mm-hmm. So he's he's got a big weight cut. And the dentist is uh he's a great fighter in his own right. Super technical, and he's not as big, but the dentist is all hands. That's he, all he I've seen. Fight. Like he's got hands, man. Mm. dentist has hands they don't call him the dentist for nothing i think that's usually the only way he kind of loses is uh you know being taken down and controlled i guess but he's got hands eric anders also has hands but i haven't seen him fight for ages i think what was his last fight like christoph his last fight i'm trying to remember but he got christoph junko i'm trying to remember i remember he got shut down his legs got eaten alive by oh no 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 no. that wasn't his last fight that was khalil rantry he'd had a couple fights since then oh really yeah, I think so. I think he fought Christoph Jocko in his last fight, but I could be okay. mistaken. Um, that's a pick and fight for me. Toss a coin, honestly, 50 50. Uh, Toss a coin I, to your Wucha. Uh, yeah, to your Wucha. Ooh. Um, yes. Manel Cape, quick turnaround from the Pantoja fight mm-hmm. against Matthews, Matisse Nicolau. You seen him fight? No, but I've Neither seen Manel Cape fight, and I think, mm-hmm. I think Manel Cape might have just had. In his performance campaigns uh, against Pantoja, it just kind of looked like he wasn't pulling the trigger, right? Every now and then you get the octagon jitters in your debut. Let's have a look down the list of epic fighters who are champions from coming over from other organizations who, you know, drop the ball there. Like Eddie Alvarez against Donald Cerrone. What about Jan? You know, like, he, had Jan. A rough, he had a rough start to his UFC debut. And uh, Jan Blahovic? Yeah. I thought he won against Latifi. I'm but talking about I, in general. He lost more oh, fights yeah, than yeah. he won. Yeah, yeah. So we've had a bunch of fighters who, uh, I mean, um, what's his name? Marlon Moraes came over from um, World Series. He was the champion and stumbled, you know, had a laid an egg, I guess you could say, in the um, Rafael Asuncel fight. But then he avenged that loss. I expect the same thing from Manel Cape. I think this poor Matisse Nicolau is getting lit the fuck up on the feet. And if you're going to do it, if there's any, uh, if you're going to do it in any weight class, flyweight is a good weight class to, you know, stumble a little bit at first and then pick yourself back up. Yeah. Yeah. And as I said, like, I, I know I'm looking, there. I always feel stupid when I look ahead for these fighters, but Manel Cape, I think he beats Nicholas, uh, Matisse, Nicolau, excuse me. I can't make the most technical breakdown. I, like if you, if you want to go back and watch Man, what Manel Cape's cap- like capable of, mm. Striking wise, he's a wizard. He's very athletic, super explosive, long, sharp. He's fast. Um, I want to see him fight Kai, Kai Cara France. He got a win as well. Um, hopefully, if he can get through Nicolau pretty quickly, they might be able to pair them back up again. But I'm pretty sure if Kai Cara France has to go through the same quarantine wine mixer that fucking Dan uh, Hooker had to, then he's, yeah, he's going to be off the books for the next fucking 50 weeks or whatever yeah. it is. Six years, we'll probably New Zealand don't fuck around with COVID. Yeah, well, it's a good thing. We would. Um, all right, moving on. Jonathan Martinez, Davy Grant, bantamweight again. As you uh, like, I said in our last cast too, man. Anything that's happening in bantamweight right now, even if you don't recognize the names, even if you don't know these two, pay fellas, attention. Just got to pay attention, man. If, mm-hmm. if if it says bantamweight on it, pay attention. Yeah. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. I actually, bantamweight can't this. do anything wrong right now. I'm sort of looking at this the same way. Like I've seen these two fight. It's just, I can't really put my finger on exactly, you know, it's one of those matches where I just wouldn't pick it. I'm sure the odds makers might have a significant favorite there, but to me, um, yeah, nothing's not, yeah. I was gonna say not. Yeah. I'd probably say Davy Grant too. It's just nothing's jumping off page there at me. Like someone like, for instance, like Manal Cape, like I know exactly what he's capable of. And I know that, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what, if he shows up, what to expect. Whereas like mm-hmm. Davey Grant, Jonathan Martinez looks at like a very good matchup. 12-4, 13-3. and three. Good matchmaking. I'm sure it'll be a fun fight. Mm. Um, now, Dan this, Ige. And this is where we get, this is where the fun yeah, begins. Because the these are some, fucker. these are some good fights right here. Mm-hmm. I feel like what I meant to say before the start of this um, main, main card was, as you said, it's probably a B minus card, but what it is, is that it looks like it's everyone who's fighting here is either looking to get put into the ranks or 
hold down their ranking, if that makes sense. It looks like all of these outside of the main event, all of these guys are floating anywhere between 10 and 15. Mm. And it's just, you know, you, you, you're creeping up on a ranking, I guess. That's what it is. Everyone's just fighting to be ranked in the top 15, I think. Yeah, no doubt. Dan Ege has been uh, protecting his spot for a little while now. Yeah, and he, I mean, he's had a really good run, man. Like, mm. uh, I love fucking Dynamite, Dan Ege, man. He's such a nice dude. Great camp. Um, is it Dynamite Dan Ego? Is it Dan's like 40K or 4K Ego or something like that? Uh, that I think Dynamite or? Dan Ego is his Insta handle. It could be 50K Ego. I think that's it. But I think Dynamite was his Insta handle. So Yeah, it is 50K for bo- for bonuses. <laughs> well, he is. I mean, he's, he, he's a monster, man. Like, I love watching Dan Ego. He's like mm. just a little pit bull of like explosive everything like he, he's mean dude like he reminds me of the people brothers yeah he way. does i sort of see in his face yeah, i can see that too he's not as technically skilled as those guys or as anywhere near as good in jits but mm. he yeah he has that same kind he's cut from the same cloth i love danny gay gave calvin cater a close fight he he got a split decision over barboza which i didn't agree with but still you have edson barboza on your record fucking took it oh, what's his name i always forget his name the guy looks like freddie mercury with the mustache uh, uh, featherweight. Uh, uh, he's got the porn stash. I always forget his name. He's he, really athletic. Kit Cat. Um, yeah. At featherweight, is he ranked? Hang on. Let me just have a quick peek at this record right here. Mustache. Bektich. Mersad Be- Bektich, man. He, he fucking put it on Mersad Bektic, man. Like he, mm. if you want to go back and watch a fun fight, you go back and watch Dan Ige fight Mersad Bektic and just fucking overwhelm him with just insane volume, pressure, mean, gets in your face, man. He's not afraid of anybody. I love those kind of fighters who just, yeah, me too. they're I the one like who push the, the action. Dan fights. Dan is just, yeah. he will put it on you for a while. It, yeah. Like he, he can go the distance. Look, he's not been given the best athletic gifts in terms of like length, reach, anything like that. But what he does have, as he said, like he's explosive, he's mean, he's just, you know, if you can take five rounds of punishment from Calvin Cater and not even get dropped, take your hat off, son. He ate mm. all sorts of kicks from Edson Barboza and shook him off. It's just tough as shit. And um, yeah, Gavin the motherfucker Tucker, as I like to call him. That's a name that I've trademarked and he should definitely take that name and put it Take that table. name, dude. He's the motherfucker. Um and yeah, 13 and one. I've been nothing but impressed with everything that he's done so far. Um, who did he beat? So he beat Billy Q. Fun fight, decision. That Billy fight Q's was awesome. Uh, that was a great fight. And then he beat uh, Justin James, I believe, in his debut. Um, that guy's also like a gamer too. So, I mean, this is a big step up for Gavin Tucky. He must have locked out or he has a really good manager to get a fight like Dan Ige. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, this is a very winnable fight for him too yeah absolutely um good skills like as you said he's got a submission first round submission against justin jane so we know he can work on the ground mm-hmm. he kind of reminds me of that like a smaller sean brady in that build not like a fighting style but he has I that kind of he, like that's kind of he is, he, yeah. he is he's built. built oh yeah he's built. yeah he's a little pit bull too man uh uh-uh. this is going to be a great fight this is probably the number one fight for me outside of the main event like if you want to watch one fight on this card that's going to be a fucking barn burner mm. watch this gavin the motherfucker we call him that for a reason and he's fighting against yeah dynamite dynamite dan and dan ego is another one of my favorite fighters in that division can't do anything wrong by my yeah by me unless he fucking beats a woman or something i'm gonna love that guy or he gets so, an illegal knee TKO. Yeah, these are really close matchups, man. I'm having, actually having a bit of trouble here picking and like really breaking down skill for skill what I see in these cards and like what it is exactly that I think it's going to give the edge. I'm, I'm going to go with Dan Ige, but would not surprise. It's probably like 55-45 in terms of like... I'm you, probably you going to take the motherfucker on this take one. Take the motherfucker? Yeah, I mean, yeah. As a, yeah, toss a coin. We'll see who comes out the winner on that. But tune in, everybody. Mm-hmm. As you said, if you're going to watch one fight on this card, make sure you don't miss this one. I think it's going to be outstanding. Um, Featherweight has a lot of, of these great contenders too. You've got Giga Jakarte coming up as well. Mm. You know what I mean? You've got uh, Thug Nasty, Bryce Mitchell. Like There is a lot of hungry contenders coming up now. And there's a lot of these fighters who have lost 
uh, in the top 10 who need to probably hold down their rank in their position. And you're going to see these Gavin, the motherfucker Tuckers. You're going to see these Elia Taporias and you're going to see these thug nasties and, and uh, Brian Halls and just, you know, the talent level outside of the top 10 at featherweight is, you know, very, very good. Not quite bantamweight, but still outstanding. Yeah, it's top three divisions right now easily. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's just a, the problem with featherweight is that everyone's kind of middling even in that top 10, they're all like, anyone could beat anyone there. Anyone could beat anyone. And then you get right to that. Like there's a precipice cutoff. Of the yeah. Division. There's a precipice where like you get cut off there where you have Korean zombie is, you know, clearly a cut ahead of sort of that middling area. Josh Ortega. Emmett. Jo- I feel like Josh Emmett's sort of sitting right there, but then you said Ortega just blew him out of the water. Max Holloway just blew Calvin Cater out of the water. Am so, I fucking, am I, Tripping balls here, or did I hear that uh, Jeremy Stevens is going up to lightweight? Oh yes, that I is true. About that, yeah. um, I think he's fighting Drakar. Is it Drakar? Close, maybe. It might be. Actually, I, actually, is, I think that's exactly who he's fighting. I actually forgot about that. Hell yes, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Jeremy hasn't fought at fifty-five in years. years Jeremy years. has to be the most entertaining fighter that loses. That I know, like he can't do any wrong. Like he loses fights. But you're like the UFC's like, there's no fucking way we're cutting Jeremy Stevens, dude. Mm. He, he's a yeah, he's a special breed. I would have loved to have seen Jeremy Stevens against a lot of the featherweights still. Like I know it's a shit cut for him, but there's still some fights there I want to see. I want to see him fight Korean Zombie. I want to see him fight um, uh, what's his face? Uh, our boy Shane Burgos. I'd love to see him fight Edson cool. Barboza. There's still so much work there for him to do, man. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, he. I love Jeremy Stevens. But at the same love- time, you don't, you won't be mad if you see him pack on a couple extra pounds. If he's not cutting the weight, man, he might be a lot. Yeah, it might be a lot better for him too. He's I think got he, a rig on him. He is a rig. He's got crazy power too. And what I think is great about him going to fifty-five is that he did do it earlier in his career. Like I know he had, he fought um, Cowboy, and the size was a little bit hard back then, and it's still going to be a problem because he's not the biggest. Like he's a big featherweight, but there's, you know, there's a difference, man. The lightweights are way bigger, but um, I think one thing, and I know he's not even on this card, so we're not, I don't know why we end up talking about him so much, but Jeremy Stevens has very good wrestling that he very, you know, that he does not go to enough, in my opinion. Like I know he loves to fight. He wants to win by knockout and be exciting. It's in his blood. He's a fucking savage. Mm Mm-hmm wrestle though right be a mixed martial artist you can mix, mix it up, it up. Yeah. threaten the takedown so it allows people to lower their guard you know and, and it keeps them guessing do some yeah. stuff like that like fight a mixed martial artist fight you, we know that you can bang and we know that you're a savage and we know that you want to knock your opponent out but if he fights smart and you, you know if he's coached the right way he actually has a, a lot of very good skills i think especially the wrestling and his great dude his ground and pound for anyone who's forgotten, you need to go back and watch Jeremy Stevens. When if he gets on top of someone, oops, he's one hundred percent violence. Yeah, it's yeah. Her, it's it's actually hellacious what he does to people on top. So, um, yeah, ask Paul what's his face, <laughs> uh, um, what's his name, Bold like Jack Voldemort, whose name I can't. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett. Jesus, I go blank all the time in these podcasts they're fucking it's josh emmett man what he did to that poor man's face on top after he knocked him out and then josh emmett comes back looking better than ever though that's true Mm. but he's man his body is yeah the injury list that he's had is getting to that dominic cruz level Mm. kane velasquez you know what i mean like he's been held together by fucking chewing gum and sticky tape and and you know not good I feel bad for him, but I can't wait to see him back. Um, but still, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I feel like maybe that's that's both of those guys, Josh Emmett or even Jeremy Stevens, if he has no luck at lightweight. Dan Ige versus Gavin Tucker winner could end up fighting one of those guys. That's where you're. That's where we're at with featherweight, man. That's why I'm so excited talking about that weight class. Mm. Um, featherweight is the is the fucking juice right now, or should I say the douche? Sorry, Aaron. <laughs> go back to uh, our interview podcast on that one. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. Anyway, let's go to the co man. We've got a light heavyweight fight. We've got Misha Serkinov and Ryan Span. Ryan Superman Span. Worst uh, tattoo, though, right? Worst not tattoo. The best. There's a few bad ones out there, but it is in the top five. Um, Ryan Span was on a very good win streak before he fought Johnny Walker. Hmm. 
Um, and so was Misha Serkinov, actually, come to think of it. I think they both lost to Johnny Walker. Misha Serkinov just, yeah, unfortunate with that one, just ran into a flying knee. It happens. Um, and Ryan Spann nearly knocked out Johnny Walker until he didn't. Yeah, so that was strange. That's, what, that's the difference between, like, what I tried to explain. Athleticism can't be taught. And sometimes you fight a better athlete, and no matter how how much better you are technically and skillfully, you you make one small mistake, you zig when you're supposed to zag, and it's over. And that's yeah. what sucks about fighting Johnny Walker because he's kind of like the glass cannon of that division. Like you can hit him perfectly on the chin, and he is going to sleep. But if you fuck up and you let all that loosey goosey movement get in your head, and you and you, as he said, you make a mistake entering. And he hits you. It's like, you know, I don't want to make a comparison, but he's about as close to that, like Francis and Garnu level power at light heavyweight man. Like he is insanely devastating when he when he hits you. So mm. Ryan Span fanned that out. Otherwise, he was winning that fight. I think he was on like a seven fight win streak before that. Um, I want to see Ryan Span come out with a bit more intensity. He yeah, he is. He is like that. He's bit, so relaxed. Looks like he's just smoked yeah. a fat joint. And yeah, just decided to come in Diaz style, but he just comes out with no intensity. Yeah, real loosey goosey style, huh? It's mm. just yeah, yeah, you're Too right. He is. He's just kind Too of relaxed. really relaxed, but like, yep. yeah, I, I I agree. Show some urgency. Um, skillfully speaking, you know, he's not John Jones by any means, but like he's got skills. He's got a nice jab. Um, bit plotting footwork. He's very big though. He's like six five. So, but I just don't. He's not that athletic. That's unfortunate. That's the weird thing about it. He's big. He's big. He's, yeah. He's big, but he's not that athletic. He's pretty slow. He's got decent pop, but he's got nothing like spectacular power by any means. Mm. Um, I've never actually been impressed by Ryan Spann. I'm not gonna lie. Like he's there, but yeah, he's never blown my hair back. He has been racking up wins though, so that has to be said. Um, and well, he's yeah, fighting Serkinov, Serkinov off. a bit of a step up in competition, you'd say. So that he's got a bit of experience. Very he experienced. said he has lost to, uh, to uh, Johnny Walker as well. Um, yeah, I mean, but Sir Kunov, I, don't, I, I can't actually remember what's his last fight, but oh, that's right. So he hasn't fought for fucking ages. His last fight was against Jimmy Crute in September 14th, 2019. So it's been a hot second for old Misha Serkinov here. Um, he's got some great wins though, man. Misha Serkinov, I think, yet again, his chin's not the best i think vulcan ozdemir really like for whatever reason vulcan had just had that death touch in that run that weird run and i think it was like 2017 where vulcan just kind of starched everyone for like three fight win streak before he went yeah, on remember that one remember when volkov was sorry, yeah uh vulcan ozdemir, ozdemir. Yeah, ozdemir he was kind of like the luigi from super smash bros where he just like yuck, 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 and fucking just fly forward and throw in weird shit and people would just die yeah. Um, Misha Serkinov was the first one, I'm pretty sure. He's got a, he's fought the who's who the last, you yeah. Know, so, listen six, to this seven, though eight, like, five. he had like um, Kudalaba, he beat Krylov to, uh, by submission, lost to Vulcan, lost, knocked out by Glover, beat no Pat shame Cummins, being knocked out by Glove. Yeah, the Glove man, the Glove fits a lot of the time, always. Um, Johnny Walker, what can you say about that? It's just unfortunate. He probably might have beaten Johnny Walker everywhere else in that fight, but just for whatever reason, just managed to eat a fucking flying knee from hell. It and happens. then beat Jimmy Crute, and Jimmy Crute's looked nothing but sensational since that loss. Like a necktie as well. Yeah, it's crazy. No he, fucking joke. He, he, she, obviously, Sir, Sir Kunov is built like the fucking Hulk. Have you mm. ever seen a more bricked up individual? He's as thick as, as it gets. So he's extremely physically strong. He's got an outstanding ground game. His ground game is almost second to only probably, as I said, maybe Glover. But they fight a little bit. They they, they, they have a different approach on the ground. But I think Misha's, yeah. If he gets you to the ground, you're going to get tied up into a pretzel. And ask Jimmy Crew. You know what I mean? So I feel like Ryan Spann might not have the power to put, like, really knock out Sir Kunov. And I think Sir Kunov's going to drag him to the ground and, you know... To pull a jack array on him just probably tie him up into all sorts of pretzels or ground and pound him until he's out of there. i can see it happening he is at a, a quite a size disadvantage in terms of height and reach mm. that has to be said like ryan is a pretty big fellow but as you said he's not overly athletic hasn't got crazy pop on his punches for someone that big it's not mm. that fast mm. misha 
is pretty clean across the board. He's pretty. Yeah. He's got pretty good game across the board. I think. I can see Serkinov being able to walk through. Yeah. Spans yeah. distance and then just. Yeah. Hopefully, I think he'll probably shoot towards like a body lock. They'll have that weird hugging against the fence sequence, and I think mm-hmm. Serkinov will just kind of trip him out under on the fence and just drag him down into deep waters, and Span won't get up. Yeah, That's I agree. All right. And, yeah, Main event. I mean, not a big, uh, not a lot of consequence on that fight. Sorry, just saying before we move on. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like whoever wins that, this you know, who do they fight? There's, there's not a lot of upside to that fight. I think. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't really care. Like, I'm not that invested. Um, In either guy, it could be yeah. anybody. It could be anybody under. Yeah, I'd say winner. Ranking winner. six. Winner probably fights someone like a Devin Clark or somewhere in that range, I think. Mm. Uh, yeah, moving on. Main event. This is what we came to talk about. This and one is worth putting your pants on for. Yeah, uh, so there's a lot going into this, and I'll let you lay it up for us. <laughs> yeah, so we've got Leon Rocky Edwards. He's on an eight-fight winning streak. He just beat RDA. And uh, he's fighting Bilal Muhammad, who just fought. Wait, what's his, who did he just fight? Diego Lima. That's right. Yeah, any any not Douglas Lima, not absolutely not yeah. Douglas Lima, destroyed Diego Lima. I'm pretty. Was it a thirty twenty seven or was it twenty nine twenty eight? I'm pretty sure. I it was, think it was thirty twenty five. Thirty twenty five. I think yeah. I think he dominated through. Uh, you'd have to check that out for the scoring. But so Bilal Muhammad fought yeah Diego Lima in his last fight a couple of weeks ago. Actually, it wasn't too long, and then now he's been able to capitalize on a sh- short. Um, short notice opportunity to fight Leon, who has been, I mean, we could spend the next half an hour talking about the, the fucking, the chronicles of Leon Edwards going after that he RDA had, fight. He has had a rough road the last yeah, couple of years. Yeah. He has just, he just needs to fight, to get a fight. He's been calling out everybody. No one wants to fight him. And he's gotten, remember the name, Bilal Muhammad, who in his last fight really showed that he could mix it up. Yeah, he did, he did Bilal Muhammad's all. looked nothing but spectacular for a while now. Like he's not how I look at Bilal Muhammad is he's I love I love fighters like Bilal, and I'll tell you why. Not I and I go I go on about this a lot because I it does remind me of myself. Um, actually, no, it doesn't, but it kind of does, uh, and I'll mm. explain. Not athletic, no athletic advantages there. It's not explosive, not overly powerful, not overly fast, but what he is is hard working grinding style man like what for every shortcoming that he has in athletic gifts he makes up for for hard work skills 100 percent uh being yeah, just technical uh precision in everything that he does hard work ethic i think he comes out of the duke rufus camp i'm not if i'm not mis- is he i can't remember i swear he trains with felder but i could be wrong there i'd have to double check because i feel like Sean Brady also fights in that camp. And I thought Sean Brady just called him out. So maybe they don't train. One of them doesn't train at that gym, but below he's, he's only lost a handful of times. I think these two actually have the same record. I think it's something like 18 and three, 18 and three. I I do feel like Leon has faced the better competition Mm -hmm. um, and he's beaten the better names, but below when he beats these guys, it is really well-roundedness that wins, you know, it's pressure toughness greediness gets in your face beats you up takes you down beats you up wherever you are you're not comfortable in the ring if you're fighting Bilal muhammad if that makes sense he's not a beautiful um you know nothing about what his style is 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 pretty to watch like he's a grimy buzzsaw of a fighter man he Mm. walks right into the fire um he pressures he had a great fight against and a gr- outstanding game plan against Lyman Good, former Bellator champion. Just mm-hmm. beat the fucking brakes off of Diego Lima, who's the brother of a, a Bellator champion. Douglas. Um, Douglas, that's right. The you know not comparable, but still has to be mentioned. Um, and I'm look, I'm super happy for Bilal Muhammad. If anything, I'm gonna put the shades on for this segment right now. He loves his Ray Bans. He loves his fucking love yeah. It. He loves like some I, shades in the I in mean, the interviews and weigh-ins. For what he lacks in an exciting style, he makes up for in likability. Like if you yeah. hear this guy talk, if you hear the way yeah. he yep. talks about his love for fighting, it it's hard yeah. not to like the guy and become a fan. Yeah, man, Muslim fighter as well, representing yeah. um well like represented. 
yeah, just re representing the culture, the religion, um, the the hard work ethic. And they love it too. He's well liked. There's, there's yeah. a lot of uh, yeah. Muslim um, this fans, is why we a lot of sheiks and everything that yeah. just love this, watching Bilal fight. This is why we remember the name, right? He wants to be remembered. in, And as you said, this is a big move, man. You want to fight a number four ranked welterweight on mm. short notice, you know, when he's not beaten anyone else that's ranked yet. And, you know, he's on a, a bit of a tear at the moment, but this is a huge step up in competition for Bilal, I believe. You, no, know, shit. He's you saw the he's, photo of of leon edwards recently that he's looking yeah athletic looking juicy. he's looking, looking juicy he's looking aerodynamic dude yeah yeah no shit he looks like a fucking beautiful sail on a on a nice boat you know what i mean it's just all of the fucking those tr tree trunk legs that he's got going on now he's looking like a statue made out of marble yeah he looks good it's probably the best shape I've seen, I've seen him in with the mm. photos that we've been seeing lately. But I mean, as you said, like shape is not everything, but it looks like Leon has shaken off the COVID that he had. He's finally in a mindset to fight. He, he was scheduled to fight Hamzat, Shemaev for a while. He got COVID. Shemaev got COVID way back last year. And I think about April or May, he was meant to fight Woodley. That fell apart because of, you know, the lockdowns and the COVID. Yeah. Um, and he would have smoked Woodley too, based on what we've seen. Yeah, based on what we've seen now after the Kamara Usman, I think he was meant to be, what, the next guy after Kamara to fight him. Is that right? I thought he was actually going to be. Yeah, so it was, remember, it was Kamara, then Gilbert, then Colby, and that was his last three. But it was meant to be Kamara, and then it was meant to be Leon, but then Gilbert Burns got that opportunity instead of Leon mm. to fight Woodley. And then obviously he capitalized and went on to get a title shot. But after we've seen the last three performances against Woodley, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to take a pretty solid guess that um, Leon would have gotten the rub from that fight and walked into a title fight. Mm. Um, let's go over the dynamics of this fight. As we said, we've got a kind of like a, a good, well-rounded fighter who has like a really kind of methodical pressuring game, grimy sort of fighter. They both kind of fight the same though. They both have oh, that. They, I oh, think no, they no. do. You reckon? I think it's very similar. I disagree. I would say Leon is a much more of a striking specialist. He's got he's got out he can grapple, and we saw that with the RDA fight. He'll take it to the he'll take the fight to the ground if he wants to, and he'll he'll scramble, he'll wrestle, he'll do a bit of this, bit of that. But Leon's an outstandingly well-rounded fighter too. But I think that his striking, the way he he utilizes his, his reach. His speed is off the charts. He's out. He's got a, a crazy. He's got like a laser left hand. He's got this crazy elbow that he uses exiting the clinch. He's got excellent kicks, excellent timing, ex excellent distance management. And I think Bilal is going to wade into deep waters very quickly if he tries to just kind of bulldoze into Leon the same way that he has been with all these other guys. Yeah, so Muhammad's going to have to. He's going to have to really he's gonna have to take him down. He's going to have to turn the chainsaw on early and he's going to have to, yeah, yeah. he's going to have to take yeah. him down and he's going to be the one who's going to have to take him down into well, deep waters. Leon has never really had the best takedown defense. But in saying that, in two years off, I'm sure he's been training a shit ton of wrestling defense for Chimeyev for one. He can two, sprawl he's been, though. Yeah, he can sprawl. He I mean, sprawl. and he has a good game off of his back as well. It's mm. just um, RDA didn't even sniff a takedown against Leon Edwards. And I mean, RDA can wrestle. I think RDA wrestles and kind of fights similarly to Bilal, um, you know, maybe even more technical than Bilal. Yeah, I, I think Bilal's just a bit bigger. And I think, yeah, Leon shut him down pretty easily. And I think if we're going to expect Leon is, he was only 27. So technically he's 29. So you're actually thinking he's a lot more older and a lot more of a veteran going by his age, but he's actually not even 30 yet. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So he's still even coming into his physical prime. And as, as we saw with the last photos, um, that he uploaded. He's yeah. had some time off. He's able to do, um, to focus on the things that he needs to, how do yeah. I put it? He, he's had time off. He's had time to train. He's had, I mean, he hasn't had he's ring sick. time, but he's been sick, but he's just, he's going to come in hungry. He's going to come yeah. in hungry. He's yeah. going to come in, in great shape. And uh, I don't know, I just, sometimes they come back after a, a, a long layoff and they look better than ever. Like, I yeah, mean, Ortega's Brian Ortega, prime, dude. Prime example. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. I, I expect that. That's exactly sort of what I'm, I'm expecting here. I love this opportunity for Bilal. I think this kind of sucks for Leon. 
there would have been a way bigger upside if he had a fought Chimeyev, but I think Chimeyev would have had a, more of a chance of beating him. Um, I'm not really basing that off anything because Chimeyev has fought nowhere near the competition that Bilal has. Mm. But just from what I've seen Chimeyev do in the short amount of time, I was pretty worried for Leon, whereas I think Bilal's a lot more winnable of a fight yeah. for Leon. I'm excited for Leon because I believe Dana has said already if he wins this, he's getting a title shot. As he I should. Don't think, I don't think Kamara Usman's arguing with that either. Mm. So it's win, win, win here. It's just, as you said, like, as long as Dana has promised that title shot, because sometimes even then he might beat Bilal and they'd be like, oh, well, you beat someone just ranked in the top 15. So you held down your place at number four. Now you have to fight Gilbert Burns. Now you have to fight some other killer. That'd be such like, a dirty move. Yeah, just be such a shit thing for nine, that to happen. That'd so be a I'm nine just, win streak. Yeah. Well, we've seen it happen before, though. Tony Ferguson, dude. Ferguson, Charles Oliveira. Like, there's just guys who are sitting in that exact same position where the UFC just kind of don't, no matter what happens, they just do not want them to fight for the title. Um, I'm just, I'm so glad to hear that Dana has promised basically Leon the title shot if he wins. Now, I feel like by merit, if Bilal wins, he should also be, you know, looking at a title shot. But I just don't think that's going to be it. Like, they'll, if Bilal wins, he'll probably have to fight one more time. I do believe if Leon wins, you can't argue with a nine fight win streak and a champion who says he's keen to fight Leon again. So, yeah, Edwards has done everything right. He's yeah. gotten sick, sure, but he's done absolutely everything right. Yeah. And he deserves got, it. If he, win, if he wins this fight, he deserves it. We know got this. dunked on by the UFC there for a while. You know, they tried to offer him bullshit fights. This is another, I'd say this is kind of a bullshit fight offering, but he has to take, he just wants to fight. So, as long as he's been promised the title shot after this, I'm happy. But you know how it's been. As you said, nine fights to get to a title shot at welterweight is pretty man. crazy. Shot the front door. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but we'll see. Very excited for this fight. As I said, I, I, I'm just, I, I just want to celebrate with Leon. That's what I want. I want to see. I'm done bagging on Leon. I kept so I was not on his side of the fence for a while there with the whole like, you know, I'm done. I don't want to fight anybody. I just want to fight for the title. I should be in there against Gilbert Burns. Blah blah blah. I think yeah. once he conceded to like, all right, well, I'm going to take the hype away from Chimeyev. If this is what you guys want, you're going to unrank me so that I am forced to fucking, you know, strong armed into fighting Chimeyev. Yeah. And, and it's now not I don't like even get that it's fight. Not like he, it's not like he didn't step up to the plate. He did. Yeah, he, he, was, has now. he was going to do it. So yeah, he him- stepped up now. I think this is a perfect proving ground to say, all right, it's my turn now. Like it's my time. If he runs through Bilal, like I think he's going to, um, Hopefully we'll see him against Kamara Usman. Uh, that's th- that's what's fair. And then you do Masvidal versus Colby. I swear to God, though, I swear to God, if the UFC deny Leon this title shot and they go with Jorge Masvidal instead of Leon after he just lost, and then they're like, oh, well, you know, the champ wants to fight Jorge because he makes more money mm. instead of fighting Leon. I'm going to be so mad, dude. Fuck all that. Yeah, Fuck all well, that. Dude, dude, yeah. All I can say I th- is... Yeah. I think they'll give it to him. I yeah, think hopefully. They will. Hopefully. I think they will. Okay. Especially because, I, mean, yeah. I mean, Usman's fought uh, fucking Edwards before, so... Yeah, and he knows what's up. He said that he's one of the only fighters he knew that he couldn't mentally break when he was in there with him. Mm-hmm. He said, even though that was a pretty one-sided fight, he said, like, I knew that Leon was not mentally broken as I was, you know, crushing him. So, mm-hmm. I would watch that again. I think... It goes the exact same way, but I just think Leon does deserve the shot. And I think Kamaru Usman deserves to, you know, at this point in time, he's just going to have to start rematching everybody because there's no fresh matchups for him outside of Kiesa and Wonderboy. He's beaten everyone else mm. except for Bilal. I guess if Bilal gets in there too. So we'll see. Mm. Well, there you have it. That's the card. All right, man. Bit of Here's a B plus card. card. Uh, you can sleep in if you want, but make sure you catch that headline yeah. and prelim. Ashley Yoder and Angela Overkill. Hill, she is a. I, I'm actually digging the predlocks. I don't know if you've seen them. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, dig those. Okay. I dig everything she does. Yeah, I love her. Um, all right, man. That was fucking always good conversing with you. I'm glad we're pretty much on the same wavelength through most of that. Um, yeah, dude. I'm sure we'll. Yeah, we'll we'll get a breakdown out to you guys. Um, probably after the fights are Sunday, maybe like Monday. Some somewhere along there, we'll break it down. Dude, what happened? Dude. Where did we go right or wrong with our picks? And um. Yeah, look forward to more of these, I guess. We'll do we'll be doing fight predictions and fight breakdowns before and after every card for probably the next 
forever. So tune in. Can't get rid of us, dude. Yeah. Check out our last video. We did, as I said, at the start of the potty, we did break down the fights from last weekend um, and what we our thoughts were from top to bottom. So if you wanted a pretty detailed run through of what went down on that card. Um, we also did a fighter interview last week with the boys from XFC. who had uh, Eren and Khan come in, uh, graciously give up some of their time. They are in fight camp at the moment. So to come in and chat to us and just... You know, very you know, informative, that yeah, cast. Fucking was. awesome, man. It was sick. I think that's our best work to date. Um, yeah, look forward to chatting to you again, brother. And I hope you have a good night. You too, man. All right, peace out. Peace Talk out. To you later. Yeah.